Hello and welcome to LCDC TV. Today I will be discussing issues that affect our industry and I'll also be joined in the studio by Anna McGrady and Danny Scarf, Danny O'Regan, who are both committee members on the LCDC. Before we came on air, Boris Johnson made a speech at the Tory conference confirming his commitment to put an end to the low paid economy. I find that rather ironic that when he was the Mayor of London, he oversaw the biggest transfer from a highly skilled taxi service, often voted the world's best, yeah, but gave priority instead to just one. And we know what I'm talking about, that relied on cheap, low paid labour, in many cases subsidised by us and other UK taxpayers with benefits. Well done, Boris. They say better late than never. To be perfectly honest, I find it quite risable that he is now preaching to one and all that there should be a change of direction from low wages and low skilled jobs. But as we only know too well in the cab trade, just where Boris's promises can lead to. Mm, right. Also, talking about the situation in the UK today, we got the HGV crisis, and that has dominated the news last week about the shortage of HGV drivers and the lack of their industry investing into the training of new drivers. Well, I find that, again, quite ironic, because when you look at the cab trade in London, the problems facing the HGV industry pales into insignificance so that facing the licensed London taxi trade. The lack of knowledge students, coupled with the introduction of the new 12 year age limit on our vehicles, introduced by our Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, threatens the very existence of our industry. I mean, today I'll be speaking to Danny Scarf, as I just said, and he'll be talking and we'll be discussing with you the numbers, the numbers of drivers, the numbers of vehicles, and, and they're all quite scary when you're looking at the figures before COVID, now, presently, and also into the future, with the number of drivers that we're losing and the vehicles coming off. So, you know, there'll be some shocking figures for you to take in today, but again, we need you to take in and discuss so you're fully aware of where the trade's going. And don't forget, you can always come to us and discuss with us. Email us in at thelcdc at gmail.com or even on Twitter. If you've got a question, like I said, the whole point of LCDC TV is to have a conversation with you, the cab driver, about our industry. Yeah, It's not about me trying to talk to you or the club trying to say what we think and that's got to be right. No, it's not the case. What the whole point of LCDC TV is, talking and having a discussion about the vehicles, age limits, charge points, U-tags, everything, yeah? And it's a two-way street, so I want you to get involved. You might be watching this in your cab, on a rank somewhere in London, and you might just be thinking, you know what? Maybe I want to ask Grant and the committee, what about this, what about that? Well, th again, like I just said, contact us, let's have that discussion, with you, the cab train. When I come back, I'll be joined here in the hot seat with Danny Regan from the LCDC committee on numbers of vehicles, drivers, and where does the trade go from here? So I'll see you in a minute. Thank you. Hello, welcome back to LCDC TV. Like I said, I'm joined Danny Scarf. Afternoon. How are we? All right, Dan. How are you doing, Grant? Good boy. Yeah. Won't talk about the football. Anyway, <laughs> Dan, we've had a conversation. <laughs> we've. He's a Tottenham fan. That's yeah, why yeah, I'm yeah. a Chelsea fan. So there's a little bit of gap between us here today. Um, uh, as I just said earlier when we started, we've been speaking over the last couple of weeks, if not couple of months, about the state of the trade. 
the impact of the 12 year age limit, the knowledge figures, and, and to be honest, we've, we've written them all down today, yeah, for the drivers to tell you exactly what's going on. And it is really quite scary, isn't it? It's, well, there's two ways of looking at it. It's scary or it's petrifying, but... But also, what I want to say is, although what we're going to be saying on here with the facts and figures, you could be like, where's the, where's the revolver from the, you know, shoot yourself. The drivers and knowledge students, they should take heart that... Certainly, certainly. You've got to push on, knowledge students, or even if you're thinking of doing the knowledge, with the loss of older drivers, there's an industry now that you can train to to get into and get out in the cab and earn a living. Well, I'm sure some people will look at this as a doom and gloom broadcast. No. You know, it's far from it. If you are, on, we're going to we're going to discuss the knowledge numbers. We're going to discuss the overall driver numbers. What better incentive if if you're if you're struggling on the knowledge? We know where hard it is. You know, certainly. Um, especially with you know coming through this pandemic you know drivers you know applicants it's, it's hard work especially if they, they haven't had appearances yep. you know it, it, they, they, they you know that they, they halted the appearances didn't they over the over the pit over lockdown etc mm. so i mean if you if you're finding it hard on the knowledge i mean what we're going to show to you is that the numbers will drop but when you eventually come into the trade if you're you know if you're thinking about dropping out just bear this in mind that and if you're if you're you know thinking of joy shall i do the knowledge shall i do the knowledge shall i show a prior to do the knowledge we're going to show you a, and it's going to be an incentive to show you why you should carry on or see you know, it through you see it through and or you know apply it yeah right danny i'm going to start i printed some off here some of these figures right it says the numbers in the taxi trade right so by the first lockdown we've got 18,892 vehicles that's right and the driver licenses were 22,396 right. yeah but what's the situation there Dan? well now if we if we look at vehicles first firstly we're down to 13,981 so that's literally 25 percent of the fleet have gone yeah um we we see you know over on the telly over the period during lockdown there was vehicles in fields you know rusting etc yeah. well they're not coming back you know they 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 very few are they, you know they're not gone they they've gone sorry and they're not coming back you know there there's be a very you know small handful that will come back and they would be relicensed by now an anyway so then vehicles have gone you know they're probably all in breakers yards as we speak so so we lost 25 percent of our vehicles. vehicles have gone okay um as you know there's the there's the age reduction and the phase days reduction so from uh 31st of october this year to november the first next year we know there's a, there's in a region of about 12,000 vehicles due to come off 1200 1200 sorry. 1200 12, <laughs> i was going sorry 1200 vehicles to come off um yep. that that figure incidentally might be we've, we've been provided that figure through a mayor's question time but that's disputable because we we know also for another for freedom of information request there's far more euro fours in the fleet so it could be higher that figure so but we will go with the, the the figure we got of 1200 so another 1200 vehicles are coming off from now till november next year so that you know that puts us down to 12 7. so it all depends what what is going to come on you and with this new 12 year age limit i'm looking here and and the drop of diesel taxes to the overall fleet is a whopping 38 percent reduction COVID since covid yeah i mean that's that's kind of a plus as well because for you know the trade, for the yeah. trade you know we, we're cleaner i mean not many industries have, have invested in, what we where have. we have in such a short short period of time we you know we've re, a reduction since since the start of covid of 38 percent diesel vehicles in london you know replaced by um you know an, an another thousand yeah zex so you know we are, we are doing our bit of trade 
But with that, Dan, I know we've had the discussion and we've had uh, emails coming and going through the Mayor's Office and City, City Hall, that by next year, we believe that the Mayor meets his emissions target for the cab trade. Is that right? Well... It, and mean, he it could is, stop it at it, 14 years. He could stop it at 14 years. Our, our estimates, I mean, it's quite complicated, but um, when, when uh, the Mayor consulted about the age reduction, the, the, the target he had in mind was a, a 65% reduction in emissions from 2013 yeah. levels. Now, back in 2013, there was, there was something like 22,500 diesels in the fleet. Because of, um, I mean, he, he, he brought in a, a delicensing scheme, as you know. Um, that was highly successful. Not only two successes. Well, I mean, it was. It was because drivers was, have lost their vehicles that they used to rent from the garage. Well, garages, garages, garages took advantage of it, especially at the start of COVID, and also a lot of there was other vehicles, newer vehicles like the, a few Mercs, where drivers took the delicensing money, a high, the higher tier, ten thousand, nine thousand, and then sold the vehicles up north. So, wow. so them vehicles were never envisaged coming off the fleet in the first place. In the first place, no. So, so what's happened is, because as a result of COVID and the delicensing de scheme, we now got from 22,000 vehicles um, in 2013, we're now down to, I think we have the numbers. For, uh, well, um, where where we got the numbers here? It's about 9,000. Yeah. Diesels in the fleet at the, mo at the moment. Yeah. The rest being six. So it's gone down from 22,000 down to 9,000. We're, we're hitting 60% already. Massive. Now, you know, the target is for 2025. 20, yeah. Now, natural wastage between there and then <coughs> will meet his target if it was still at 14 years. So if so, he stopped it next year and just carried on. And you, you are people like myself, who's got a 15 plate veto. Instead of it being 12 years, I had 14 years. That's right. Next year, he would still meet his target with yeah, the older 2025. Yeah, 2025. Whenever any vehicle <coughs> reaches, reaches 14 years, yeah, they come off that anyway. Yeah. Because it's the, the, the age limit at the moment's 14 years. Yeah. If by 2025, he will meet his 65% target. He's going way. He's going beyond. That by carrying with the age reduction for you know to 13 to 12 on years top of the on top of the, the you know so <coughs> so I mean he, we we put that to him we've asked him we have we asked him obviously no we you know your because because there's a lot of drivers out there elderly drivers and when you look at the demographic of the cab trade the only alternative is it seems that we're going to have to either buy or buy a, a LEVC um, or rent an LEVC and for a lot of older drivers and even you could say part-timers and stuff it just they can't well, afford it's, it. it's not viable it's not viable it? it's okay. a not a viable business I mean what also what also the, the, the this age reduction has done and it, and it was highlighted in the impact assessment when they done the consultation for that for the for the age reduction is that older drivers it will be affected obviously more than you, uh, the younger drivers yeah. in the fact that if, if you're thinking of retiring you you get a vehicle and say you say well that 15 years are going to take, take me up to my retirement if they're taking two or three years off of that you know they might be 63 64 when they want it to go on to 66 to yeah, in a retirement yeah. what do they do and we know with the government and the pension pot you know, when you can get your pension, that's well, all gone up. Well, that's, I mean, so, it, it's, it's, it's false, it's more or less, it's false, the older drivers, we know, we know, leave. you know, to leave. And we, we've seen these in the figures anyway, but... And the funny thing was, I said to Helen Chapman at a meeting, I've got to take my hat off to you, Helen. I said, because uh, it didn't go down too well, but the older drivers will understand where I'm coming from. Um, I said, not only with this scheme of you decommission the vehicles, but you decommission the drivers oh. uh, and to make a self-employed man or woman unemployed takes some doing you know what i mean but if you can't get a cab 
you can't go to work. So why, why are TfL policies making cab drivers redundant? And, and the mayor, you, you talk to the mayor until you're blue in the face. He just doesn't want to listen. Well, we know he don't want to listen to us. But this policy in particular, I believe, is malicious. You know, because he's been given the facts, stop the age limit at 14. There's drivers phoning me at the office every day, Grant, I can't get a cab. Do you know a garage where I can rent a cab? And, and I'm saying I don't, because the only contacts I've got, they're all out. So you've got drivers who want to go to work and, 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 and earn a living, but they can't. Well, at, at present, awful. At present, um, the re ratio between vehicles and drivers, the difference is about 30%. So there's 30% more drivers than vehicles. Now, it's never ever been that way. Normally, on a, a normal year, it's about 12%. So that just shows you the impact. The impact. Even though we believe that the driver, the driver numbers drop, will happen. It will catch up eventually but there's going to be some casualties in that time because it will take time for the numbers as we will explain later but they're, they're going to drop in line with you know with, yeah. with the vehicles but you know at present um i mean it, 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 it all depends how many drivers actively working i mean if there's there's drivers who, who have sought other forms of employment during lockdown which we know there is if they decide to come back or that you know that they lose their, their their temporary form of employment and they have you know they, they do come back then there is there could be that as we say uh, a, a, a demand for vehicles um, yeah. and we're seeing it at the moment uh, we spoke about vehicle numbers i want to get onto the driver numbers then um the overall drop we've got some figures here the overall drop from 22396 to 20151, which is a decrease of 2,245, 10% of drivers. That's that's just since COVID. Since COVID. Since COVID. That's just since We've COVID. lost 10% of the fleet, driver-wise. 10% yeah. of drivers have gone. But, two, two, well, they, well they, they've dropped. We've lost more, obviously, because of new drivers. but. Since since the first lockdown, we we've, we've effectively lost two thousand five hundred and seventy drivers. Um, they, and they're not renewed their license. Well, they've gone forever. So they've gone forever. Yeah. Well, they, they, they will be either surrenders or medical um, issues. Medical issues, retirement. You know, we, we know that the, the the demographics, age demographics of, of, of drivers. Um, you know, it's quite old our, our age demographics, and so we always we always had. A, a large proportion, you know, leave. They were always replaced by uh, the knowledge, you know. But I mean, roughly in a normal year, there'd be about 1,300 who what would leave the trade for one reason or, or another, another each each year. But we've seen 2,200 and oh, sorry, 2,500 leave since in in 18 months. Wow. I yeah. mean. That's the drivers. I want to talk about the knowledge numbers then, yeah? Because as you said, when you have a churn over of the cab trade, and we used to always, you lose some, but then you have a new influx of knowledge guys, battle boys coming in, working part-time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, yeah? Um, you always had that. But unfortunately, with the drop of knowledge students, it's not looking like that, Dan, is it? No, unfortunately, um, go back so oh. 10 years, there used to be something like 2,500, 2,700 applicants every year accepted onto the knowledge each year. I think last year there was about 175, but obviously, you know, with COVID, etc. But um, I mean, since, and we go back from start of COVID again. In the region, about 330 new drivers have come through. You know, when you when you're losing 2,500, it's not oh, a, it's, it's not. Yeah, no, it's, and, it's and not encouraging. It's not it? encouraging. But there'd be drivers out there watching this going, I don't care. Less drivers is great for me because I'll earn more money. That's the short-term view. 
but the long term view for the cab trade, you know, our industry and how it survives in London uh, and meets the demand of Londoners, if we keep shrinking and shrinking and shrinking, not only do we become a bit irrelevant, but our voice becomes irrelevant with TFL because they'll just, oh, go away, you know. Yeah. You're, you're just like the gondolas in Venice. Go away, you know what I mean? They, they don't listen much to us now anyway. They don't. Um, I mean, we let's not beat around the bush. You know, these numbers are from the start of COVID, the decline was happening way before then. You, you, you know, and, it and it, there's, a, there's, there's reasons why. You know, we know full well private hire have doubled in the last 10 years. Yeah. You know, yeah. they effectively, they, you know, someone, you know, they, they'll say, oh, it's two different tiers, it is two different tiers. But effectively, they're oper- they operate, we operate in the same market. market. We, 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 we're competing for the same And when you customer, look at, basically. yeah, we are, and, and, and they operate the same way as us. If you look at a cab driver driving down, and I know we get howled, right? But more and more, the apps are encroaching in the way that we work. So if you're sitting in your cab and the app goes off and you accept it, that is no different to you sitting in your Prius in a side street. The yeah. app goes off, you take it, you drive, you pick it up. The media sees there. I mean, the media sees there. That's right. right. I yeah. mean, the convenience and also the price. You know, they they. they they, they subsidise their fares. Effectively, they, they they put all the onus on the drive their drivers. You know, fortunately, they've got we've got the the ET ruling, the employment ruling. Um, maybe the VAT. That case might you know but they're, prove they're, a they're stumbling block for screaming in they all the way they, 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 they don't like that. But I mean, like I say, the reason why the decline has happened steadily over the last. The lack Seven, of regulation years, you know, by TfL, it's, it's, and that, that's what I think, Dan. When you look at the the yields of the cab trade, right, the vehicles, the licences, it is all down to TfL, and really lack of any meaningful regulation within the private hire industry. Um, if the private hire don't like something and have a scream, especially the app from across the pond, right? We know with TfL and this government. It doesn't happen. Well, you, you've only got to look at the the, the improvement in safety consultation. Oh. You know what, what's happened to the driving test? They've been now kicked down the road indefinitely, yeah. more or less. Well, why did why were they interested? Why were they a proposal in the first place? Are you telling me everything's changed? Why did they propose it? Why did the mayor want have it in his included in his action plan yeah. in the first place? The reasons for it, for it to be included, what was it, have they gone? But for some reason, TfL kicking the can down the road, it looks like indefinitely with the driving test. It's the same with, you know, the signage and, and you know. It seems that anything regulation wise that TfL want to bring in against the private hire, there is such a massive backlash. TfL do not seem to have an appetite for taking them on. Well, you know, they're quite true. happy to lay down and talk to us and go, yeah, well, you know, if if, if you've got a driver, and I know for a fact through FOI requests, the amount of private eye drivers driving in London now with a, a overseas license never took a, a driving test in the UK. Wouldn't that that, 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 um, that might change. I mean, they have to have an EU driving license for three years or, or and a free UK one. But I mean. Well, I go back to the fact is, you know, they brought these, this this consultation in. I mean, the consultation was back in 2018. Yeah. It yeah. finished and closed. They they constantly kicked the can down the road on this. Yeah. They've used government task and finish group. They've used government statutory standards on some elements in that, the signage and stuff like that. I mean, I'll give you an example. In the consultation, they wanted colour-coded vandals. Quite sensible. You know, at the moment they're all green. They were going to have them different colours for different years. So you could... You couldn't uh, transfer so, so You couldn't transfer it. And you knew a vehicle was out of date anyway by the colour of the licence. Also driver IDs they were going to have in the window. All quite, you know, sort of sensible propositions. But they've used 
government statutory guidance and they've said, this is this, they've said, well, we're not bringing it in because government statutory standards have got a signage element within there. So we'll, we'll wait. So we'll wait. We'll kick the can again down the road. Well, do you know what the signage is in the statutory guidance? It's to tell passengers that they might have CCTV recordings. Nothing to do with Nothing it. whatsoever to do about the vehicle signage, driver, what, what was in the proposals. From the, so what it, it seems to me, and it, as with the, the driving test, it just seems to me that, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll proclaim uh, the, the, the taxi tray. We'll say we're bringing this in. We have no intention to bring it in. We'll kick it down the road. I mean, it shows with the driving test, Look, you know, three years, three years we've been waiting for this, and, and, and what, it, it's not going to happen. And what's more shocking is before Transport for London took over our industry, was the Public Carriage Office, right? And it was called Public Carriage Office because it was there to protect the public, right? So Transport for London doesn't think that people driving a minicab or even a taxi, right? With passengers, with fair paying passengers, they don't think that it's right or fit and proper for them to have uh, an advanced driving test to prove that they're a, a, equivalent to a professional driver. So anyone can just get a license and, and just drive people in the back of the cab, regardless whether they know what that, that means, what that signage means, or anything, you well, know what I mean? I mean? Advanced, it's shocking. Advanced driving tests also will have an English element because they will have to, you know, yeah. pass a practical um, side of it. I mean, when you when you look at, I mean, we 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 transport. I, I'm going to put the two trays together. We're going to we transport the most pre precious commodity there is. Now, people like the Ubers of this world, their whole mo is. Listen, gig economy. If you've done a job, you know, eight hour job, nine hour job, and you want to earn a little few quid at night, come and drive for a minicab. You know, it should never the be fact like that you're, this. You could be tired and be It should, it should right? never be like no this. Matter. We it want you on 25%. You, know, you, you know, it's a we, we should, we like to keep going back to. We, we transport the most precious commodity there is. The standards should be not high; they should be extremely high. Full you know, and, and driving Things tests, kids, daughters, yeah, wives, and driving, you know, kids. driving tests, a uh, driving proficiency element is vital. It should you know, be a given that whoever's driving you in the front of a taxi or a minicab should be at a, such a level where you're safe well, right. in their hands. But you, you but just TfL ask, don't want to know. We that. just ask the reason why. You know, it's 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 it. Well, I tell you what's shocking. I, I just don't think they've got the appetite, and I don't think they've ever had the appetite. Well, unfortunately, being the old one here, I've attended meetings over the last over a decade, and we have been promised so much by Transport for London. I think it's seven years now that Helen Chapman has promised me that they're going to put in signage within the cab, in the mini cab. Because if you get in a black cab, as you know, you've got a sticker behind the, the driver, a sticker on the window, on the fare chart, how you make a complaint about this driver, right? You've got three different lots of signage to complain that he took a left turn, it was 20 pence too dear tonight, or whatever, right? About eight years, I think it is now, that Ellen Chapman said, we're going to put them in. A couple of years ago, she said, oh no, we've had a kickback from the... Um, the high-end chauffeur companies who don't want to put the stickers in their chauffeur vehicles. But like you said, there is not an appetite for Transport for London to put these stickers in to gauge complaint numbers in private eye well, vehicles. That, that, that not goes, a chance! That, that goes back to what I said previously about the signage element of the cons consultation. That was also in there, the complaint stickers. But, um, but you know... And we're still probably the most regulated taxi service well, in the I mean, world. Then you, you've got to ask yourself, you know, they offer, they say they're going to do things. And, they, they, you know, they offer us up, you know, oh, we'll do this. We'll, you know, you don't worry, this is coming in. And they never bring it. Now, they, you ask yourself, is there real appetite? No, there isn't. Is the intention? It's just a, it's a game to them, simple thing. 
But you know, you ask, do they really want people phoning up, making complaints to TSB? Because they haven't well, got the stuff. You know, they, they really want. You know, you only got to look on social media where you know passengers are, are complaining about Uber. You know, a, a, a journey. They all they get is a robotic reply. They please, always go. Please DM us. Yeah, yeah, please DM us. I've been trying to get yeah, it. Yeah. Well, now if there was complaint signage in the in the vehicle, they could then get onto T T P H. Now, do T P A wants that headache? We know, you know that they. I will say that. But because but, of our numbers compared to the private hire, they got an appetite for us. Yeah, oh yeah. They, you know, they, uh, I took a journey home from Waterloo. It normally goes 16. I get them in letters from members. It normally goes 16.80, but last night it was 17 pound 40. The driver must have gone the wrong way. Not that he was caught at a set of lights or there was a bit of traffic. And TFL write to the driver saying we've had this complaint. You need to come back to us and tell us why this happened. Your license may be at risk. It's absolutely scandalous what TFL and how they treat us as a trade. But that's for another show why they get away with it. Right. So, just quickly, we're going to be joined by Alan McGrady, our Ranks and Highways Officer. So, to sum it up, Dan, we, we've taken a hit, haven't we, on vehicles, on drivers, on knowledge students, but, and it is a big but, can we turn the tide as an industry, Dan? Um, yeah, I don't see more. I spoke to, I mean? I spoke to Jörg Hoffman, the CEO from LEVC. And I said, is he aware of the numbers and everything? And he said, yeah. yeah. And he said that LEVC have quite an ambitious production uh, and sales package for the end of this year coming next year. So he, he understands that there's a lot of older vehicles going off the road. And, and let's wait and see what LEVC have in store for drivers to buy new vehicles. I mean, I think the big, the big obstacle in, in that sense is the, the lending and lenders need to open up a purse string that's right at, at you know reasonable rates of lending you know yeah. I mean didn't, didn't we see one ten percent on the uh, LEBC deal awful How can, you know what's the base rate now uh, three, half a, three quarter percent three quarter percent and then they are offering ten percent lending you know that's Blimey. that's that's you know if if if, if, if Lending was to open up, um, and for the you know, and for the proprietors, a, a reasonable rate. You know, this, as we say, this, there is a great future for this trade. I don't think we'll get ever back to them numbers of twenty-five thousand. The house days of the country. No, no, I don't think that. The mayor don't want that. I don't. Well, we don't want twenty-five thousand vehicles driving around empty, looking it's for work. It's not his plan. Is no, it? it doesn't sit with his remit. You know, but if we can have a if Joe Havers, you know, can earn a significant a amount of money to, in, in order for them to invest in the trade, buy new vehicles, it's have the work. ability, you know, we could have a fantastic. And like I say, uh, what we said at the start, if drive, you know, applicants of the knowledge are having a hard time now thinking it's going to be worth stuff. it. It's going to be worth it. And if it you're thinking of doing the knowledge, I'd say get your bike. You know, I mean, tell the truth. I mean. A year ago, two years ago, if I, if I, if someone asked me, should I do invest four years in the trade, I would have been seriously doubt in whether I'd give it the okay. Yeah. But now, my, 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 it is, it, it's changed, you know, my, it's changed, and in your well, opinion, it's an in industry, in my opinion, it's, it, it's, it's, it's you worth know, getting it, into. Just for the simple fact that numbers are going to drop. And there is going to be that demand for our services. Yes. You know, and if there's demand for our services, drivers earn money. I can't put it better than that. Thanks, Danny, for coming in today. No worries. Uh, when we come back, I'll be joined by, I said, Alan McGrady, Ranks and Highways Committee Member of the LCDC. I'll see you in a minute. Thank you.
Hello and welcome back to LCDC TV. One in, one out, as they say. In the hot seat, I've got Alan McGrady, Rakes and the Highways, committee member of the LCDC. You may have seen him around the cafe. He hovers around the Astral Cafe and Sapori's most of the day. Sponsored by Sapori's. Sponsored by Sapori's, yeah, yeah. So, Alan, I know you had... Uh, let's start by saying that yesterday, when I spoke to you, you was on a... Uh, a bit of site visit in Westminster with the yeah. ranks and TFL. Yeah, we, we've had sort of this in the book for ages, like because they they're not doing meetings. We've been doing two meetings with Westminster Council, TPH. It's been hard to talk to anyone, as you know. So we arranged. We had some ranks on a tranche list that have been hanging around, and Westminster Council wanted to see the feasibility whether they can do them, they can't do them, just to get them off the books. So. We had a drive around Westminster Council, Banks Committee and TPH yesterday. And during lockdown, it's probably, people have noticed that we've been popping up somewhere where we probably shouldn't have, but we've been meeting demand at places yeah. where we've not had the demand. Like at hospitals, all of a sudden, hospitals during lockdown were still being used. So we went yesterday, we've looked, we looked at sort of Great Portland Street, Portland Hospital, uh, up at Grove End Road, uh, Surface Road up around there for for the hospitals up there. They look feasible and Westminster sort of they've took photos. They've gone away. We've come back and it's it's a lot of to and fro in now. They'll come back say we want one. They can get one. We'll say no. We want three. We want two and see what we come up with. It's so it's all down to Westminster. It's their car space. It's their road space. Everyone else is vying for it. Mm. So loading people want it. So then we went to Grosvenor Square, the Rosewood Hotel. We had plans the other week that came through from from uh, WPS to say that this is what's going to happen at the Grosvenor Hotel, well, so the Rosewood Hotel. And uh, lo and behold, we didn't have a taxi rank. We didn't? No, we haven't got one there. Guess what, though? The hotel want two spaces for their own private Cars. Cars. Oh, okay. So sense. we haven't got one at the moment, but it's it's still in the early days. The hotel isn't open until 2024. It's going to be a big five star hotel, but there is room for us now. But We're Westminster, they they would appreciate the need to have a cafe oh, outside. They, that they, they know that, but it's someone else has drawn the drawings up without going to the Westminster. The people we deal with on the Crown Estates. This is the Grosvenor Estate, okay. so we deal with the Crown Estate a lot. So this is Grosvenor Estate. And we can then now go back to them and say, look, no, we want the two spots or three spots. We'll yeah. take as many as we can get. Yeah, yeah, sure. So there is some shuffling to be done now. But this is what we've always said to, to Westminster. Get us in on the ground floor. When there's a hotel opening up. When the drawings are being done. Don't, even. don't wait for the hotel to yeah. go up for us to come and say, look, we want a space there. And then six to 12 months down the line, it then goes in. So, yeah, we had a look at the new, the new ranks that went in and... Yeah, Hacky San. There was a bit of grief over social media that we'd lost. I've not, seen that. Yeah, not gained. We'd lost spaces at Hacky San. Only if people went out and had a look at the rank sign, they would have seen. Yeah, but it's easy to look on Twitter and then go, oh, they're well, rubbish. That yeah, Adam McGrady. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'll get it on Facebook. Yeah, ranks or ranks committee absolutely useless, but. Yeah, then again, certain people should call me up and say that, but they don't. So what happened to Akasan? Well, we've for got, them, so we had five spaces, and I think they run from about 8.30 at night to 8.30 in the morning. But they were sort of, they looked like a parking bay. So, guess what, public parks are. Because they thought after half past six, they could park anywhere. Yeah. So we had no, we had no sort of hold, unless it actually says taxi on the floor. No signage, no, no proper signage. No, we had proper signage there, but public don't get out and look at the signposts. They just park their car up, think it's parking for them. So we've now got two spaces that run for 24 hours. So we've got two legit spaces there, and people are going, oh, we've got two, but we've lost five, three, because we had five. But if they look at the sign, those spaces become ours at night, at night as well. So we've got two all day. We've got two all day. Five, so, eight, we then, so we then turn into a five space. So we've lost nothing. Yeah, again. Lost people, nothing, gained two, two in the yeah, day, but it's people, a loss. But people didn't see that. They jumped all over it, and certain people start saying things, and it just rolls into. So then I have to go on social media to try and calm things down. Okay. But, so yeah, we've, we've, we've got that, and then we've got the one hotel. We've got the one space at Buckingham Gate there in front of the hotel. But yet again, like the Shard, drivers don't want to feed over onto the one space. So we get arguments because no one is using ranks 
as they okay. should be using. Feeder rank is there to feed the main point. You go across, you it's feed It's not across. a separate rank. No, it? it's not. It, it can work as two separate, but you must move over to the main rank when it becomes. You can take off a feeder rank, as you know. Yeah. You can take off the point, but you move over. But if you're on point at the feeder yeah, so we, and the cabs go on the main, you feed over there. You, every and... time one should go across. Yeah. So we thought, oh, to get a spot outside, the roughly as close as we could get to the door at St James's Court Hotel, we've got one spot there, which is perfect for wheelchairs. Because this one, guess what? It, it will probably go on the one back on the five space will probably go because it's not wheelchair accessible. Mm. So unless they can move it over there. So we've got one where we can say, well, if the wheelchair goes over there, we can feed over or the one off the point takes it. But what's happening is that one's being left free. They don't want to work that because guess what? Oh, I'll get work off of this. But no, that's... The wall cups. Yeah, they I get the wall cups, cups off that. And that's the same arguments I have at the Shard. Day in, day out. They don't want to work it. When St Thomas's Street goes back two way, and it will go two way, we're back down the bottom. Now, if we lose the two cap rank, yet again, we're back stuck down there and they don't see the bigger picture. Drivers, yeah. as you know, well, some are there just for themselves. So with Westminster Council, yeah, they, I still say they're, they're good for us, but we have got some changes coming <laughs> around Oxford Street. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, I think, we'll burn a street, we'll go one way north. One way north, all the way up, to all, all the way up to only up to where it's it splits now. We'll go yeah. one way north up to that bit, and then as you go down Newman Street, we'll come one way south. Oh, right. So going down Oxford Street, you won't be able to go right up Newman because that's now coming south. But we haven't been told yet again where the last. Say you're going to drop off at the hotel if you're coming up Oxford Street. Right. And this you can't is go this up is up what we're waiting to find out. Oh, Whether okay. we can actually we could go left into Burner Street. Okay. We can go, or we can go right to Burner Street. That's not been confirmed. Whether we can do the same right as we could at Newman Street, or we could get an Uber license and we could drive up one way streets the wrong way and just and just, oh, just, just blame it on the sat on the sat nav. Yeah, because sat nav probably won't be changed out. That's and an option. We've got some changes coming on Oxford Street, as you know that they're still they're still looking to swap Oxford Street around. Solo parts could be going electric vehicle only. Sorry? Yeah, you heard that. Yeah. Say that again. <laughs> I said that this one. <laughs> well, it's this, they're looking at certain roads in, in and around so I might go electric only. But what about if you're on petrol when you're driving? Well, they don't, uh, they don't oh, know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, sorry. They don't, they don't know. Cut that. that. But, uh, yeah, and then we've got Covent Garden. They're looking at a scheme in Covent Garden as well, maybe. But Westminster at the moment are looking to take out their COVID uh, sort of alfresco dining areas on Old Compton Street. Well, and expand it? No, 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 no. Take them away now. Oh, right. Because so we it, can have access. Yeah, because we'll have, we'll gain access. They're now looking at Covent Garden, probably to probably to bring Henrietta Street back in, and Tavistock, and have that sort of so we can drive back through Perfect. there. Because no one wants to do alfresco dining in winter, do they? It's, it's, it's a bit hard, isn't it? Yeah, it is hard. So they're looking to take that. The only COVID restrictions that Westminster Council also put in that we haven't sort of pushed them on yet. And I don't think they'll do it until after Christmas, is whether they actually take Regent Street, take the curb lines back oh, out to where they was. That knife is a bad... Whoever designed that... Yeah, well, it was a make way just to make the curbs as big as they could and no no buses or no nothing. Should have made it buses and taxis only, but that's down to them to make that decision. But I sat on a meeting with Heidi Alexander. We were discussing amongst things Bishopsgate, Busgate, right? Yeah, and and she said that the time of the meeting, it was only a few months ago, that these were only temporary with COVID. Now the fact that Boris is saying we need to get back to the office, we need to open up, all these LTNs and these big road closures like Bishopsgate, surely, if Heidi Alexander is as good as her word and says <laughs> really? when it really, yeah, <laughs> and says stop laughing. Um, um, stop laughing. Um, if she's as good as her word, then once it all starts going back and we're seeing it is going back now, then these closures should just be opened up to, to as Boris says, build back better, yeah. to open the, open the roads back so they work better. Yeah, no? I, I see it might go the other way. Because, really? Because they want, if COVID's still about, they might want to give as much footfall to the workforce in the city as possible. Yeah, but if you're not wearing a mask I, and you're not socially well, that's, distancing, yeah, that's, that's, then what's the odds whether I'm standing next to you now, they probably come to the city on an underground, 
where they're sitting like this and they're not going to wear a mask they're going to go up to the, the ground level and walk all covered by fresh air yeah but, so, the, but TfL probably said a completely different way that the only thing that, that matters to them is their buses are getting through probably quicker than they ever got through and that's the main part of it their buses are now transversing up and down yeah. and Bishop's I'm, gate unaided and I'll tell you what was interesting we're all talking about blaming the mayor and all that for LTNs it was in the Telegraph I believe that the government now are saying to local authorities if you're going to start to lift up these LTNs and, and open up they're going to stop giving them grants so as we all know, it, we think it's Sadiq doing it, but he's being supported by this government, not the, cons the, the Green Socialist Conservative Party with Boris at the helm. He's actively using the mayor and TfL to push through his agenda but and saying to the councils, if you're going to shut all these bike lanes or you're going to open it up, we're going to stop your funding. It's disgraceful what's going on with Boris. Well, that, that was always going to be the way that he has always had that agenda of one bike lane, hasn't it? So it, it either comes from, it, it it comes from Andrew Gilling and then it comes from other, uh, Will Norman. So he's got such a big lobbying yeah. sort, of, sort exactly. of machine behind him. Even down to his wife, he's probably pushing him on green issues as well. So he's going to be there or thereabouts because he's a cyclist. Exactly. Just quickly, before we wrap it up, What's happening down the Fulham Road outside the hospital? I'm oh, right. So, yeah, we've got the free cab rank went in. Thanks for reminding me. Just, that's right. Should have written that down. Uh, we've got the free cab rank that's gone in. TPH have done well, really, to push that in. They've, they've, they've worked hard and get They do work hard. Don't they? Like I say, other parts might let us down, but the ranks, and I'll, and I'll, I'll sing their praises all the time. They do work hard, and they've got the free cab rank. There was huge problems down there with overranking as they would say or jobs parked up but they have said and like KNC have said that if if it gets abused if there is overranking they'll pull it so we've just got to be a bit a bit the drivers yeah they've got to be keen strong. just not to sort of overrank and stick it up behind yeah yeah, yeah 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 play yeah. play the game there and if it's busy yeah you probably won't have 15 cabs because they'll be doing it but you will have the three cabs sitting on there and we've got to do that with a lot of regs but it has showed you though that where we have ranked up during COVID, and I'll say again that there is there is scope for us to have ranks at certain venues now and hospitals that that we can we can do do with. Well, I was always amazed that on every, outside every hospital there isn't a cab rank because the times I've dropped off at hospital and then I've seen some poor soul coming out in a wheelchair trying to get into a mini cab where. The driver or, or, or their, their husband or wife is trying to give this poor soul a fireman's lift to get into the coming out of hospital in wheelchairs. How fantastic would it be to get into a black cab straight in the ramp? in the back of the cab and off it should be a given that every hospital should surely look at having a cab rank installed outside or on their property and it can be called in for for all their patients yeah we should we should have ranks at, like you say at every hospital a lot of the problem is is the hospitals sit on private land and a lot of their land is taken up for ambulances and people dropping off and they use it for parking revenue like they're doing so we should have two bays at the bottom of St Thomas's by the Lambeth wing we should have two bays up by the cancer wing at guys all most hospitals should be we have got we did have two two at the UCH but they took that away for Covid and uh, is it coming yeah, back uh, it it probably will because they're the ones that actually installed that that one in they put that one down after someone sort of really got onto him to get it and he did well getting it so they see the virtue or having a cab rank outside the hospital. Yeah, sometimes the hospital needs to be told and it needs to be poked. And just, just, I'm just going to shift up as well on, on, off that one onto Charing Cross because I know there's been some, some stuff said on social media about Charing Cross. And put, they have put a sign up that says the ranks only in is only from working from I think it's 6:30 to 11:30 at night. TPH have spoken to Charing Cross, and they said the reason that it, they're chasing it up because someone's put it up. 
and they're not sure he's put the sign up, but they reckon one of the reasons was was one of their staff got hit by a car on the fog call. Not a cab, but a car or a vehicle. So they was looking to try and stop the access into the station or stop the throughput of vehicles. But at the moment, the, the person at Charing Cross has said, well, the status quo stays the same and you carry on working it. Because we work that rank till sort of two, Early three hours. Four hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 some, it's people on their own, women on their own, people, they know that there's going to be either a cab on that rank or pulling onto it. And listen, all this prevalent news at the moment about women's safety, lone females feeling unsafe walking the streets of London, central London, as we know, ain't the safest place in the world. So if you're a lone female thinking, you've come out of a party, I've got to get home, you certainly don't want to be flagging down a car on the street, but if you know that there's a cab rank, well, you can make your way to the station. Well, well we did that years ago, didn't we? When we put the, the, the security guards at Novo, and then we, put them down, then we put them down at Tiger Tiger. That's right. Yeah. And we took a lot of flack off the radio for doing that because they said, oh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be doing that. But we actually had drivers and women coming round to us. Yeah. Saying, and thanking us. Yeah, thanking us. And, yeah. and, and drivers were actually pulling over and, and to get unruly drunk passengers out of the cab, they would actually pull over and say, look, can you get them out? Because... Well, I, I, and I'll be very brief, right? When we had the marshals there, uh, a cab driver stopped outside Noble and, and said to the mar our marshals, I've got a guy in the back, he won't pay the fare. Right? <laughs> they opened the back door, they elo eloquently they removed helped, him, helped, right? him out the cab, yeah. helped him down to an ATM, yeah. got the money, come back, give it to the driver, and off he went. So there, there's a, a there, very positive aspect of having and, this. And we, we should have marshals on a few ranks, but TfL won't fund those marshals. No, so exactly. They pulled all the funding. Alan, before we wrap it up, I've got, as I said, LCDC TV is predominantly to have the discussion between us and you, the cab driver, the cab train. I've got a message here, just come through from Aziz Mehmet. Please talk about bad driver etiquette, not good for the trade. How many times, Alan, have you let someone out and they've gone down the road and pulled in in front and nicked a job? Yeah. yeah. And well, I do say nicked a job, not took a job, nicked a job. Yeah. Sometimes you look at the badge number and you sometimes you just you, you wipe your mouth, he might not know. No. But because there isn't a rule book that we hand to drivers coming out and say, look, there's no rules, but this is a sort of unwritten rule. If you let someone out, you let the next job go because that would be theirs. Yeah. And yet, Picking up close to a rank. Yeah, picking up in my, my bugbear, picking up in front of the rank. And then the people say, well, how far do you give it? No one knows how far you give it. If you can see the light on the cab, you throw it to the rank. You say it back there. Yeah, you, you yeah, would yeah, say yeah, it's, yeah. there's a cab there. If you're behind the rank, some people will say the rank's there. And some people go, well, no, it's it, yeah. I'm, I'm not in view of it. It's not It's not there. I'm behind it, so I'll take it. Yeah. It's, 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 there is bad etiquette out there. Just when, be using common sense. Sometimes, really. sometimes though, Grant, you look at the badge numbers and they're down low. And you think, you should know better than this. You are. But, yeah, they do. You scandal. Should, you think you should know better. You've been out long enough to know that you shouldn't take from there, there, or pick up in front yeah. of the rank. But there's always going to be bad etiquette. And, yeah. I'd say most of the 99% of the time, the drivers know exactly what they're doing and we all play by the game. So if you're watching this, you just got out, yeah? If a driver lets you out of a side turning, please don't drive down the road. Someone put their hand up, put in and nick the job. But it's not good. On that case, is how far do you then drive on before? If the car, the cab's still behind you, do you, do you still throw it back and you've got a mile? Yeah, you do. Yeah, That's I know. That. I, always, I always turn off. If he's still behind me, I will turn off just to get rid of him. So I know the next one's mine. And if you're near a rank like Sloan Square or other stuff like that, someone's coming out on the other side of the station, just say, look, there's a rank there, because predominantly the rank's full. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah They've yeah. been stewing on the rank a bit, and, and come on, play the play game. Play the game. Play that's, that's, that should be the word, play the game. And, and that's what the majority of us do. I'm going to um, shout some questions through, right? Got we've got some questions that just been... I'm going to shout, we should only okay. have a so if Dino, Dino S, what's happening with the shard ranks? It's a mess. mess uh, okay, what's well, happening? He needs marshalling for a few months to teach drivers. Okay. It, it doesn't need to teach drivers because the drivers working it have been out ages. It's all coming down to greed. 
They don't want to move off that three cab rank to shift over to the two cab rank. I've had so many arguments down there. The drivers that are working that three cab rank want it as only a single rank. They said, do away with the two cab rank. We went on demos to get the two cab rank. We ain't gonna get rid of it, work it. If you don't work it, guess what? We'll lose it. And then they'll say to you, what are you doing in the uh, cab ranks? We've just lost the lost ranks. Lost cab rank, but the drivers, the drivers down there, they're not new badges, they're old badges, they've been out ages, and they will sit there. I will pull up to the window and I'll go, are you going across, mate? And they'll go, no, I'm sitting there, you can do it if you want to. So they'd rather be on point at that rank, rank than two or three on that rank. Two on the other one. Exactly. They don't want it. So I will go across. I will, I will drive past three cab drivers. If they don't want to go across it, I will go oh. over and work it. Nine times out of ten, I'm off that point of that number two right before they've even gone. Now, weird. You've, weird. Got, you've got to do it because this is what's happening on feeder ranks because, okay, the hotel was shut. This is all of, this has all come about because the hotel was shut and the hospital there was still running. People were walking out the station and guess what? They walked to that one first. And yeah, okay, sometimes you might sit over on there for ten minutes and you'll watch three cabs go off that one now. But that's what they're afraid of. And what's even worse is, the worst bit is, the traffic lights behind it, the cab drivers will sit there and wait. They'll wait, but they won't throw it up to the rank. They're, they're illegally overranking. This is the this is the best bit. They're, they're trying to nick a job. They're illegally them. overranking on the back end, and I don't care because you shouldn't be doing it. And you know you shouldn't be doing it, but if you're doing it, but don't nick the job as it comes out because you should push it up to the feeder rank because that is the front of that rank, not across because that ranks first. Push it up to there, get them to walk up. Don't take the next job off and then drive past the free cab rank because yeah, get a game, that's bad etiquette. There you go. Any more? But but we won't get marshals down there because no one's gonna no one's gonna marshal. It should marshal itself. It has done before. When the sorry, just quickly, when the rank was down the other end, guess what? They couldn't wait to get up to the two cab rank. They as soon as that cab was coming down. Could be a flyer at the oh, hotel. Yeah, anything. Well, they they couldn't wait to get off that rank to get up there. And like Alan says, I remember when we was organising the demonstration about the shard with Leon Daniels, I think, said you won't have a rank, didn't he? No, it was Who Garrett. Was it? Oh, Garrett Emerson. Sorry, Leon, it was oh, your probably, number two, yeah, Garrett he probably, Emerson. He probably, said it somewhere, he, he probably said it somewhere in line, but yeah, Garrett Emerson said, let them idiots demonstrate in a one-way street or something. And yeah, we, we blocked the place. It up. was the owner of the Shard. I was in the meeting and the owner, Garrett, sat there with his blue, with his blueberry, with his blackberry, he was sitting there and he was like, yeah. Didn't look no one in the face. He just sitting there and went, yeah, we're going to give you the rank. And the owner went, I told him to give him the rank. I wanted that rank. Mm, yeah. So just shows you sometimes. There you go. Got well, that that's it. The moment. Right, that's okay. it at the moment. So listen, is that me done for the month? Is it? No, you'll be back in a couple of weeks. So there you go, right? I hope you've enjoyed the show today as much as I have. Again, LCDC, if you want to think of joining the trade org, come to us, look at the website, see what we're doing. As you see, we've got Alan, we've got Danny, myself, full-time drivers, just trying to make a difference uh, and trying to keep this great industry of ours alive by whatever means necessary. So, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming in, Alan. Cheers, Granny. Lovely. My head's better this time. Good boy. And yeah. I like the drawing. You've done well with that drawing on the back. It took me a long time yeah, with the old pen set out. I thought it was a bank seat you had drawn there. Yeah. You've done really well. I'd rip it off. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. Take care.